Okay, so this is part two of um, our conference experience. Um, one thing I want to touch on, because there are some major growing pains that are happening in the U.S., is um, long, wait, long waiting calls when you call corporate. And one of the things that they're doing, I mean, they're, they're cross-training all these um, new people that are working there to understand the business, Tower Card and Angie's Plus. So have a little patience with them. I know it's frustrating, but do not use the callback option. Do not use it because basically they have some like, I don't know, 85 lines that are open. And if all 85 of those lines are being used and you call in and it gives you the option to let them call you back, you're not going to be in the system and your, answer, your question will never be answered especially when it comes to qualifiers day or deadlines and certain things for promoting your team. So don't use a callback option. Just put it on speaker and get some stuff done. Um, also, they're also having problems with orders that are not going through. And you, most of you guys know that I'm a stickler about writing your order number down when you process an order or screenshotting it, but you really need to make sure you get in the habit of doing that right now and having your team do the same thing. Because if an order doesn't go through, all you have to do is give them that order number and they'll be able to search it through that and make sure that your customer wasn't um, you know, charged for that in addition to putting in like an order that actually goes through. Okay, so I just ordered this book called The Organized Mind. And you guys know I'm pretty all over the place. Like Pam and I, were, we had this amazing mastermind the first night of conference. And we just had so much going on. We were like, we're going to do this and that and this. And then I called her to a mastermind, and I didn't remember anything that we had talked about. <laughs> so I need to organize my mind. Um, and especially because we get so involved with multitasking, and I am the worst person as far as this goes to admit it, but it's killing me like cognitively. It is totally doing damage um, to my mind. And you may be like, wait, no, I thought like multitasking was a good thing. Um, our brain is 50% of our body's mass, but it's using 20% of the energy. No wonder I can't remember everything. And it talks about how we can only focus on four things at a time. So think about like four things. I mean, like even if you just watch the news, there's also that little scrolling bar and I find myself reading that and then I'm losing the information that they're giving me on the note, on, on the news. So it's all about offloading. Offloading is like taking what you have to do and putting it somewhere physical. So if all you're using is this to make a to-do list, to put things in your calendar, you're not turning on a part of your brain that needs to be organized and that needs to take action. So like get a notebook, get some three by five cards and have them with you all the time. If you have a notebook, you can go back to what you told people. I need this. All these coaching calls that I have, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, what did we talk about last week? So that is so important. And also, three by five cards. This is my questions for Patton today that I have to remind myself that I have to ask. And on the back are the questions that I need to talk to him about. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. But what you can do is you can have all these things and... You know what? You're probably not going to accomplish all of them in one day, but you can go through and figure out what's the most important thing that you've got to do. And then guess what? You can just rip it up. It's awesome. So it feels like you just vacuumed your floor. If you've ever had that experience where you're like, yes, I accomplished something, that's what those three by five cards do with you. Keep them with you all the time because some of them are just small things that you can get done in a small amount of time. So, so also performing like the smallest task first in the morning, like a lot of you have heard me talk about that book, Eat That Frog, and you like pick the ugliest, nastiest frog to eat first so that way it's over with. Well, that's great, but maybe do something first that only takes you two minutes so that you're kind of like warming up your brain. You know, you kind of do a little active stretches before you go into the gym. This is the same thing with your brain. And remember, it's taking 20% of the energy if you're using it. So when you are performing big tasks, do it in 50 minute increments and then give yourself 10 minutes to just do something else. Maybe it's to, you know, get in some of the exercise that we don't do, but, you know, hitting up 10 minutes of like push ups, sit ups, you know, doing some different things will help your mind get more active. Um, so do not be a multitasker. It's absolutely awful for you. Um, and then when you talk about your things with your customers, offloading on them, you say, let me make this easy for you. You can do what I do. I eat two shakes a day and I eat all the capsules every day. Doesn't that seem simple? You know, like they want to know what you do and then you can kind of go into your story. Um, and then, let me see, hold on, I'm trying to read my notes. 
they also talk about how you should sleep eight to 10 hours so that your brain can, you know, get some rest, but also take into a daytime nap. Who doesn't want to go to their calendar? So fill your calendar. And Pam already talked about like, if you have a goal, your calendar should match that. Um, okay. So same thing with social media. Um, I'm going to get more into that, but that's another thing to factor in. Um, okay. So the company is going to start doing, and some of your customers have already have access to this, whether you realize it or not, they've been doing a pilot program. It's a customer relationships management program. And basically they've been allowing the customers to go in and be able to expedite or delay their own products, which I thought at first was going to be a really bad thing. Um, but it's been, it's been really effective for them because they've known they have a notification when their order is about to go out and they've noticed that when they hit the delay option, it's given us more time to help them develop a habit rather than if you just don't notify your customers that their order is going out, 1.3% are always going to cancel and we don't want to have that. Um, okay, real quick on the Omega blend, you guys might have seen a picture of me back in January um, with a little sample of it, Ashley Dwyer and Deb Dowdy too. We still don't know a whole lot about it, but it's the full complement of the Omegas, three, five, six, seven, and nine, and it's from, for, from vegetarian whole food so sources, and if people ask you, yes, it is cold pressed. Um, it's going to be really unique to the market. Again, there's nothing else that's going to be quite like it, just like all of our other products. Um, and it's staged for introduction in 2016 to 2017. I have heard that they're going to allow the NMDs to have access to it first and to give feedback. So thank you very much. I will give you guys a lot of feedback on it. Okay. A lot of, another thing I know, Cassie Johannes, you're probably going to nerd out on this. So turn your little feelers on on this one. Um, research. They haven't taken the foot off the accelerator in regards to the research, um, but stories are taking over because the stories are supporting the science behind it. Um, again, they have no control over the timing on when these research studies are going to be coming out, but a lot of them are anticipating are coming out between this year and next. Um, there's one that's happening in Australia, and they're basically revisiting an old study that was focused on inflammation and bioavailability, but they're going to dig a little bit deeper now because they have new technology. Um, the University of Memphis is tapping into the influence on microbiome and our health and our gut's health. Now, I know Mitra Ray knows a lot about this already, and she already did an amazing microbiome um, presentation. So I've got to believe she's holding back and giving the full details, but that's a huge new area of research. Um, also, there's a combination of University of Padua and University of Colorado, and what they're doing is somehow they're mapping out the Juice, pop, Juice Plus population against the general public, and they're seeing how their health, the Juice Plus health, varies versus those who aren't taking Juice Plus at all, and they're also seeing how it's going to impact healthcare costs. So I'm curious to see if they're going to be, um, if there's going to be a way for us to contact insurance companies or not. Now, this is my idea. I'm not sure about theirs. Um, but also a way to contact big, um, you know, bigger businesses that offer benefits packages and seeing if we can offer Juice Plus to the whole group of people that work in, a, in an area so that they can, you know, be sick less and have their employees there more often. Um, so basically, just they're just bridging the gap between research and the real world impact on health. Um, but the really exciting thing for those of you who are not researched, um, you know, read right up on research very much, but the good thing is, is that very soon we'll be able to say that we have 40 published studies on our products. Like who can compete with that? They're also going to have a future research going in the direction of aging, brain health, eye health. Um, they're going to do more studies on complete because it's the most fastest growing product and selling product of the whole like juice plus history as a whole, or even including NSA. Um, and they're also going to be doing research on our new products. So probably the omegas is what they're talking about. Um, I know we don't talk much about Tower Garden very often, but I think that's going to be brought more into the um, the future. By St. Louis, we will be we will have a developed business plan for making things more simple using the Tower Garden because I believe they are buying out Future Growing. Um, so who were the first ones that allowed us to start selling um, Tower Gardens? But don't call corporate about this subject. This happened like last week, so they have so many details to sort out. But just know that there is going to be more of a plan in place. Okay. Now, this is going to be kind of like a deeper conversation. Um, Dr. Tim Elmore, Elmore blew my socks off um, two days ago. He talked about growing leaders, and he's wrote a ton of books. And one of the books that he wrote is Haptitudes. Um, and the idea is, is 
we're building a bridge, not a wall between the generations and Juice Plus. You know, if you talk to your grandmother about Juice Plus, you're going to talk differently to her than you're going to be someone who's in college right now. So he's really kind of shown us how to do that. And he talks about if you want to lead people well today, you've got to read them before you lead them. You've got to understand who they are and what their past is so that you can talk, you can speak their language. And each generation represents a different paradigm as a colleague, as a customer, as a vendor, a leader, a prospect, a stakeholder, whatever it is. And for the first time, there's like six generations that are all influencing the world right now. So we kind of have to be aware of where, how they tick. So the generation from 1929 to 1945, um, they entered the career just grateful that they actually even had a job. I mean, this is when the Great Depression happened. They're st and they're still, they're still frugal, they're thrifty, they save everything, they're grateful, they're conservative, but they're interested in buying and selling goods. And they grew, they grew their own meals. So think about how we can introduce Juice Plus to those people who experienced, you know, life during the depression. But then we have the baby boomers. They grew up with parents who wanted to give them a better life. So they had two cars, two TVs. McDonald's was franchising now and it's a service economy. So the rich and the elite weren't the only ones that were buying services. Everyone was getting it. And then the the baby boomer boomers came around in 65 to 82. And after nine months after World War II, there was, you know, the maternity world's wards were full. And then all of a sudden, there was a shrinking population. So because they brought in the introduction to birth control pills and Roe versus Wade, so these um, baby busters, these Generation Xs were growing up in the shadows of baby boomers. But they found that they wanted something real, something to bring back in the family and recreate it. They wanted an experienced economy. So like, um, goods and services that aren't enough for this one. They want the experience. So Disney was way ahead of his time. And they, they said, like, you didn't just get a birthday cake with this generation. They had to go to Chuck E. Cheese and get that birthday cake. And then in the millennial section, 1983 to 2000, this is the largest demographic and generation in American history. So this is a really good, to tap, good one to tap into, especially when it comes to the business. Um, three out of four people... Are, will be a millennial, you know, the 1983 to 2000 people in 15 years. So we've got to learn about them. I just happen to fit into this category. So um, they're the future of our workforce. Um, they're kids that were born in the 80s and 90s, and they look at life as a buffet and a cafeteria. They're tailoring everything to their tastes. So like we stopped buying CDs because there was only two songs that we liked. So we were buying songs. Like me, I went to five different colleges. I think I've lost track because I didn't find the one that just fit me perfectly. And schools are now allowing you to make up your major. And people are making their own decisions as spiritual decisions where they're combining all sorts of different things that fit for them. So think about how we can make that happen with Juice Plus. Um, and they're looking at, they're buying transformations. It's not just goods. It's not just services and experiences. That's not enough. They want to be transformed. They want to have their life change. And I think that Juice Plus is a big part of that. I mean, who in this meeting hasn't had their life transformed? Okay, and then the last generation that we have right now, as of now, are the Gen Zs or Homelanders, and they're born in the 2000s, and they're so opposite of the generation before that. Their introduction to life was Homeland Security. This is when 9-11 happened. There's terrorism, there's racial unrest, and these kids are a little bit more jaded and they're more into coping and hoping. So they're not just buying into going to school and working for someone. They're more entrepreneur focused. And isn't that great that Juice Plus looks for entrepreneur people? Um, and also the technology for them is hacking. I can figure out myself. They like that challenge. So as someone in like, as their upline, you've got to figure out how to approach this differently. Two things you can focus on is fear of missing out. They don't want to miss out on something and the YOLO, you only live once. So remember though this, their attention, attention spans are shorter and so is everybody's. We've really got to cut down on what we're saying and make sure that we're putting, making our point across rather than verbally vomiting. Um, and this is going to continue, so we've got to figure out how to capitalize this. So time is more important. The meaning and new money is different because they want meaning, their meaning to go with their work. There's a hunger for options to grow, um, and there is a sense of entitlement that increases, and whether you like it or not, we've got to figure out how to deal with that. Um, there's a need for speed and space that's continued to go up, and then there's a desire for customizing ex expansion. 
So keep that in mind. So when we look at social intelligence, how we're effectively going to navigate through working all these different relationships, connecting with those baby boomers, they want to know what's the bottom line. The Xers, they want you to keep it real. The millennials are like, let's get interactive. Let's talk about this. And then the Zs, they're like, keep it short. I have six seconds. So when you talk to your team members and when you talk to your customers, you've got to think about that. But there's that drawback. If all they want is speed and they want it faster and faster, there's, you've got to think about, well, they think that slow is bad. And slow is not only is bad because if, if slow is happening, you're starting to learn different things. I mean, for them, slow is their weakness. Um, when it comes to motivating people, the baby booners want that corner office and they're in that, they want that bonus and to be at a higher position. And the Xers want freedom to work on their own terms. They want people to make their own hours. The millennials, they're, they're serving people. That's where they get the most meaning. And then the Zs, they're like, it's got to be on a screen my way. The feedback and evaluation for them, and I think this is really huge, huge that I haven't tapped into at all, is baby boomers want an annual review with full documentation. Like, they're going to love that PVC report. The Xs, they want that steady and honest, like, share with me the pros and cons for everything. And the, and the millennials want immediately and frequently, like you constantly got to be like, okay, you're doing great, or this is what we got to fix on. Um, and then again, the Z's just want a short on screen. So if you can just give them like feedback of, of like a conference call, this is what we covered, this is what your next plan of action is. So that works really well for them. Um, but again, like if, if, we, if our world is speed and we want everything faster, we got to remember that it's not always good. So while we have these things that these generations embody, sometimes it's about learning different things so that they can slow down, so they can stop and smell the roses. The other thing is, is people love that convenience of everything. Um, but, you know, hard isn't always bad, you know, and in the entertainment, they think that's, you know, that's really big. But, um, you know, sometimes boring is where you bring out the most creativity and empathy. So there's different skills that we've got to help them enhance and develop when they're not necessarily seeing that as a benefit. Um, you know, people in this world, they want to be nurtured, but sometimes you've got to be real with them. You know, you've got to say like, I get it. Like you said, you want to be in this business for this reason. Um, but you know, your calendar is not reflecting it and the effort you're giving me in the coaching calls isn't reflecting it. And it's not about me. I'm, I'm here and the rest of your upline is here to help, but you know, you've got to sometimes bring it back and be real. Um, and then the entitlement, this is, I think we can all agree that there could be some things that could be improved on <laughs> with entitlement, but, um, you know, these are the very elements that grow you. Um, that's when the, the best virtues come out. So, um, speed and technology do take away some life skills. And I think we need to really get that back. Um, sorry, Pat's calling me again. Um, so start more conversations with pictures um, using, you know, lots of, um, uh, lots of pictures on Facebook. I mean, people are starting to send more images than words through social media, whether it's a photo or whether it's the emoticons. And most people, two out of three people, are visual learners. So start thinking about what you're actually going to be putting to attract people. Um, I love, I wish you guys could have seen this. So he talked about Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz and how she moved from a flat black and white world into this zany, colorful world. And there were three leaders in there. If you think about it, the first one she encountered was the Wicked Witch of the West. And she threw, she led through manipulation and scaring everyone. In some ways, it was pretty effective, but overall, not so much. I mean, think about when they melted her. Everyone was relieved that she was gone. Don't be the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, the Wizard of Oz, he led through intimidation, but behind that cloak, there was a soft and generous person who probably could lead more with his kindness, but, you know, there was so much loss in translation. But then there was Dorothy, who collected a team along the way. She went, they went down the road together, locked arms, hand in hand, and they had to learn new skills themselves. She's running point and collecting team and getting them to their goal. That's what juice boss leaders do. And then they also talked about the, the difference between chess and checkers. And there's a huge difference when you start looking at the pieces. For checkers, everything looks at all the same and you treat them the same. But in chess, only knowing the strength of each piece can you win the game. So mediocre leaders, the checkers, don't know 
their team's strengths and they don't get far. But good leaders play chess and not checkers. So my goal is to treat you guys all like chess players. I want to know more about you and where your strengths are and bring those to the front because I don't know everything and I need help just like everybody else does. So be the chess pieces. Um, the other thing I loved and this fits perfectly with Juice Plus is they talked about trains and tracks. Juice Plus is a really big family and as you get bigger, which is our team, we need systems and that's something we're going to be working on. But imagine taking a train off of a track is ridiculous. Tracks aren't confining. They help you get places easier. They need systems and systems are your friend. They're liberating and not confining. So we've got to learn more about the mission driven system. I myself admit that. Um, but if someone is really good about learning that, I want to hear from you so you can train us. But we've got to develop a system for TPCS that works more like a system. Okay, and then the one of the last things he, no, not the last thing he talked about was a bit market. You know, like bits like pieces that make holes. Um, people who, when they sell things, sometimes get so emotionally attached that they fall in love with it, this, this thing that they're selling right now. But people aren't buying drill bits because they love drill bits. They buy them because they make a hole. So if a company came up with a laser that made a hole, people would stop drying, buying drill bits and they'd buy the laser. You know, that's the same thing with like the eight track CDs to tapes to CDs to MP3s. Um, they separate the programs and the products to make things better. So do you know what your hole is? What is the hole that you want that people want? The way we go about it is worth considering like a method in using it. You've got to think about methods and missions. We have fruits and vegetables in a capsule. Everybody needs it. But you've got to help them want it from you. You know, they're, they're not buying the product. They're buying you. So how are you going about that? What kind of leader are you being? And then travel agents and tour guides. Both have to do with travel. But a travel agent tells you where to go. But a tour guide goes with you on the journey. They're right there with you, holding your hand through it, describing the sights and the sounds. Juice Plus needs more tower guard or tower guards, <laughs> tour guides, not travel or not travel agents. You know, we're so quick and I'm so guilty of myself to throw advice so easily to people. Oh, do this, do that. And maybe I'm not hearing them so much. So we've got to coach more. We've got to ask people to go on a journey with us and we have to pass the baton on to the younger generation. And when you think about the baton, if you think about in a relay race, if you've ever done that or watched it, there's, there's that sweet spot when you pass that baton onto someone. You kind of have to s slow down when you think of the relay race. You, you have to, like, before you take off, um, as you're coming towards someone to pass the baton, you have to slow down because they have to start running. You know, somehow you have to meet them in the middle. And then you've got to think, are we connecting and communicating when we pass this baton? Is everything crystal clear along the way? And everything is about proper timing. You know, it's, it's a dance. So we as a team have to work together to figure that out. Um, but some seasoned vets aren't passing this along easily. And I feel like myself is guilty of that because I need to have more leaders come up, step up and empower other people. I can't do this all by myself. And I know there's a handful of you on here who are doing the same thing, but we need every single person in this team to be a leader. That's the way we're going to get through things a lot more. So um, definitely consider buying that book if you can. Um, that, that is huge. And then thinking about every step of the marketing plan that you're in, you have a new skill set to learn. Like Kathy Paredes might be able to talk a little bit about um, what she had mentioned to me at conference about where she felt she was in the business. But you've got to think about that. Respect every position you're in. And um, Social media, real quick, is they're challenging people, if you're real serious, to take three to four hours, um, you know, one time a week, at least at a minimum, to be a social junkie, social media junkie. And that pretty much means that you're stalking people on Facebook for good reason. But um, it's like you're seeing they, people have this need, like, oh, my kid is sick all the time. Um, you know, you can personally message them. I recommend using your voice and messenger. If you don't have messenger, download it on your phone, just download it and record your voice and let them hear you coming from the heart and say, Hey, I just saw your posts. I, I don't know if this is for you or not, but I might have something that can help you and your child. You know, are you interested in talking more? If I sent you a video, would you watch it? That's a little bit like Facebook stalking, or you can also comment on their posts and say, Oh man, I'm sorry. That sucks. Well, now more than likely because you are commenting and engaging on their page, 
they're going to see the things that you post on Facebook. So maybe it's talking about how you're so thankful that you haven't been sick in a really long time and it was all because of one simple change. Don't say juice plus. Like you want people to ask you, dangle the carrot. So um, yeah, I think that's probably everything. I really hope I didn't take the entire amount of time because I want you guys to hear um, from the people who were there for the first time and second and third time. Ashley, I'm going to start with you because I see you have your, um, your hand raised. You were, you were talking about social media, and one of the things that on the military side, what I have looked for in marketing and advertising is a avenue that you can share and schedule out posts. You can do it a little bit on Facebook, but they said that there's an app out there called Cinch Share and that you can sit down and actually schedule out your posts for Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram, and you can schedule them out for a month at a time. And then what you do at that point is you, you see who likes your posts, you see you know, what posts, you have the freedom instead of maybe doing a whole three to four hour block, you actually have freedom to contact the people who are liking your posts and follow up with them from there. Um, another really, th big thing that stood out to me was um, Seamus and Mary Pinrose from Ireland. We're talking national marketing directors, right, Christy? Yep. From Ireland. And they said um, it was in regards to doubts. Everybody has doubts, but there's three doubts that they have. And if you can address them up front, then it's just going to make your life easier. And the three doubts were, is this real? Can I do this? And if I do do this, will you be there to help me? So if you can address those up front, then it makes the transition from raving fan to distributor a lot easier. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and when you're Facebook stalking, he said, scroll looking for pain, whether it's financial pain or sickness pain or just, you know, just scroll looking for pain because you know this business has filled the void, not just financially for a lot of us, but it's brought a lot of amazing people into, into my life um, that I definitely am so grateful and thankful for. And so when you're scrolling through Facebook, think of those reasons why you love this and, and look for people who are looking for that same thing. And the Jeff Roberti thing blew my mind, um, but Pam covered that. And then something else I have, seven of the top 10 people in Europe are new within the last five years. That's insane. So that could be Team PCS. We have all people that are pretty much new in the last five years. So that, that could be this whole screen right here. So those are just the highlights that I have. Any takeaways? Because this is your second conference. How'd you feel? Coming up? Um, so the last day I went into Starbucks and I already forgot his name, Christy. Oh, um, yes. Larry. Larry Barnes. Larry Barnes. He's another national marketing director, just made 100 club, was in the Starbucks line with me. And he literally stopped getting his wife coffee and, and just basically gave me a coaching session right there in the entryway of Starbucks all because I asked him if he was going home today or if he was waiting until the next day to travel home. Um, there's so much knowledge out there and it's just really a question away. And I don't think I realized that the first conference, um, but that really hit home with me that, you know, there's just so many people out there that are so willing to, to tell you how they were successful and we don't use that nearly enough. Um, and then something he also told me that I definitely believe, but he says, just when you think that the conferences can't get any better, just wait six months and it will. So, um, I can definitely agree with that. Yes. And I'm going to link to Katie cause I know she's can probably back that last statement up about finding help. And I, maybe Katie, I'm speaking for you, but I know you said that you found a real awesome experience with that. Yeah, I mean, wait, hold on. Sorry, my air conditioner was on. Um, this is my third conference, and 
so I think each one has been different. You know, the first one totally blew my mind and it was insanely amazing. And each one is just definitely different. And I think with this one, the biggest takeaway that I have is, you know, yes, Team PS is big and yes, Team Shining Star is big and successful, but there are so many other teams out there that are just as successful, if not more successful, and are killing it, especially in Europe and like Canada. I don't know what these people are doing, but I want to do it. And so I made more of an effort this time around to get to know who these people are. And I had all of these people on Facebook and tried to talk to them. And a few of them were very attractive British men. So, I mean, I really was not losing, like, in this whole situation. But they're really just, you know, they're knocking the business out of the park. So I want to be doing whatever it is that they're doing. And if by following them on social media and talking to them and getting their ideas works, then that's what I want to be doing. Um, but I, I also think that it still means you have to get clear on what your goal is for this business. You know, if you want it as a hobby, that's okay. If that is what is working for you, then that's okay. Like Pam said, as long as you're clear on it. And sometimes it takes time. I mean, I've been doing this over two years now and half the time I'm still like, da, 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 I don't know what I'm doing. All right, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what my goals are. What am I? What do I really need clarity on, and what do I need to get clear on? And so that is a big personal goal for me now to really get clear and to make lists and to do a vision board or something with what are my goals and how am I going to get to those goals and to work with not just my upline but maybe some other people. Who, Ashley's right. Everybody's willing to talk to you. Everybody's willing to mentor you a little bit. You know, and you can just learn so much more from different people. And there's such a huge resource with that. Like, I literally can't stress it enough. Juice Plus is not small. It's gigantic. It's a top business. People are making ridiculous amounts of money doing it. And they're helping people. They're helping people get healthy. So I think that that is probably the biggest thing that I want to stress to people is it's a big community. There's a lot to learn from many different people on how they do things and to really get clear on what your goal is and what you want for yourself and for your team. Yep. That's exactly it. And last but not least, because this was her first conference, she walked the stage as a sales coordinator, Kathy Paredes. Yeah. Wait, 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 before Kathy goes, nope, can you, I No, 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 there's six minutes in? left. We got to hear Kathy. I'm sorry, I got to cut no, you off. No, Ken can go. go. I have much to say. No, right. I was just going to say, Katie, use that enthusiasm wherever you go, because I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I use it all the time. I use it all the time. <laughs> go, Kathy, sorry. No, no problem. Um, I think the conference was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, I had moments when I was a little disappointed with it. Um, and then in coming back and thinking about it today, I realized that um, when I was disappointed, it was when I was not being focused. Like, I think for me, if I had really sat down and paid attention instead of worrying about whether my kids were at the pool or whether my mom was having a good time or whether I was going to walk the stage or what I was going to wear that night, um, the times that I really sat down and listened and focused and took notes, I loved, 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 loved. And the times that I didn't, you know, I kind of was like, oh, I didn't really learn that much. And then I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe I could have. <laughs> um, so I think the next conference, I'm going to have a totally different mindset. Um, I also, in, on the plane, went back and looked through my notes from the Dallas seminar and realized that a lot of the stuff that I had heard in, I realized that I didn't hear it in Dallas. Does that make any sense? Like I listened and I paid attention and I took notes, but I wasn't ready to hear it. And so then I heard the same presentation a second time and I heard it. So um, I think that's probably one of the real benefits of going to conference over and over and again, because you're always in a different place um, when you hear whatever it is. I mean, I find that when I listen to the videos too, or the conference calls or whatever, that depending on where your head is at that moment or what customer you're trying to help or whatever, re going back and re reading or rehearing or revisiting that um, kind of can give you a different insight. Um, 
And then just to touch on what Christy was saying, you know, I kind of have gotten pretty confident of my knowledge of Juice Plus. Um, and so I kind of went in there and kind of felt like, well, I kind of know what I'm doing. And then I realized, you know what, I don't really have any real working team member. Like there's a whole aspect to this business, a major, the major aspect to this business that I don't do. And so, um, so I'm really like, as you look at the life stages, I'm really kind of, I'm a toddler in this business, even though I feel like I'm an adult. And so, um, you know, and I think six months from now, like if I have a couple of really solid team, if I have a couple of really good VFs or, you know, SCs, like then I'm going to feel like an adult, but then I'm not really an adult because then I have to wait till I get to be an NM, you know, like until I pin on my net first NMD. And so I think um, it was really interesting looking at the stage and seeing people who are just light years ahead and have done millions and millions and millions of HLPs and millions of 2000 plus people. And for them, it's like breathing. And I'm like, wow, I can't wait till like signing on a rep is like breathing. Cause that to me, <laughs> is going to be great. So that's what I learned. Awesome. And then Patton, since you weren't able to make it to conference, but you got to go to your first 39 club retreat. Uh, can you share your experience as a spouse? How much time do we have? <laughs> Three minutes, two and a half minutes. All right, check it out. So the, the retreat is amazing. It's the best networking opportunity you'll ever have in the business. So each of you need to get there by the next spring retreat because it was just a freaking blast. We had a great time and you learned so much in such a condensed time frame. Same thing that all you guys are talking about. Like everyone's willing to help and they're killing it. Like, People are just freaking killing it, and it shows you what's possible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that sums that part up. The other thing I would say is, um, you know, remember all this excitement right now coming away from conference and, like, hold on to it and keep it going throughout the year because it's easy to, you know, get a couple weeks after conference and sort of forget stuff and forget what got you excited while you're at conference. So retain that. And so the other day I was talking to, you know, a potential teammate. Yay. <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, I was like, you know, are you going to do this or what? And she was like, look, she's like, I don't want to let you or Christy down. You know, I'm afraid of like failing and I don't want to let you guys down. And I was like, here's the deal. Christy and I are moving forward without you. Like, it doesn't matter. Our businesses aren't going to succeed or fail based on just you. I was like, this is an opportunity for you. And that's why, you know, I'm presenting it to you. So if you don't want to do it, then don't worry about it. You know, like, that's fine. I was like, but if you see the opportunity and you see what it could do for your family, then take the plunge. It's 50 bucks. Just, you know, do it. And don't worry about failure. Like the beauty of it is, is you probably will fail. And you'll probably fail over and over again. And that's a good thing because you're going to grow from it, you know. And so one last thing, and it's a completely different subject, but it's something I was thinking about today is like, you know, I've, I've always kind of wondered, like when people ask me, what is juice plus, like what the response should be. And I was thinking about today, I was like, you know, I'm juice plus. Like I am like, if you like me, you're going to like the company because the people that are at juice plus are like me, like the community are a I'm bunch of people you. that I love, you know, and that like, they love you back and they're an amazing group and I'm healthy because of it. You know, like I just, I, you know, I've been on this product for a while and it's completely changed me. I'm going to be on it the rest of my life and I just love what it does for people. I am juice plus. Maybe that's a way to approach it and you know, it could work. That's all I got. I'm so proud of my husband right now. <laughs> I'm so